Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel, and I'm now answering on behalf of one of my students question number two from the Edexcel GCE June 2013 um, C4 paper. Um, this now is in the new P4 syllabus for the International A level. Um, now here we have binomial expansion question. It says use the binomial expansion to show that the square root of all of 1 plus x over 1 minus x is given by this expression 1 plus x plus half x squared um, and the modulus of x is less than 1. All right. so first of all what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this um, in a form where I know for example I know the square root of a fraction a over b is the same as the square root of a over the square root of b. So I'm going to use that fact to write this as 1 plus x to the power of a half divided by 1 plus x to the power of a half. Because the square root of something, as we know, the square root of a is the same as a to the power of a half. Okay, so now, what I can do is write this as 1 plus x to the power of a half multiplied by 1 plus x to the power of, sorry, 1 minus x. That's where you don't want to make silly mistakes. 1 minus x and 1 minus x to the power of negative a half using the rule, of course, that 1 over a to the power of n is the same as a to the power of minus n. Okay, you can make that into a negative. Now I'm going to take each of these on their own and, and uh, I'm going to expand up to um, the term in x squared for both of them and then I'm going to multiply them together up to those terms because this is what we, this means this times that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take each of them in turn. So I'll take 1 plus x to the power of a half first. I'm going to increase I'm going to use the binomial expansion. And the bin binomial expansion is given by the formula which is in the formula book, um, which doesn't take after a little practice much to actually memorize it or to know how to use it. Basically it's one plus x to the power of n is equal to one plus n x plus n times n minus one over two factorial times x squared and so on. Continues in that n times n minus two times n minus uh, n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 over 3 factorial times x cubed and so on and so forth it continues in the same pattern okay so with this formula we can just expand anything but we have to make sure it says 1 in this place and it does for both of them so there's no problem I don't have to modify this at all I can just go straight ahead and use the formula so I have 1 plus n n is the power so that's a half times x and x is whatever terms in here in this ter in this case it's happens to be just x as well but if this was a 3x or a 4x then this would have to be multiplied by that. that that's what goes inside this bracket and it must always say one here if it doesn't say one here you have to modify it so it says one here which um, you find in one of the other videos probably and then you got plus n times n minus one so it's a half times minus a half okay a half times minus a half over two factorial which is two two times one times x squared Okay, that's as far as we need to go in this question because we only want to have the expansion up to x squared, it seems. So you have 1 plus a half x, and here you're going to have minus, um, minus because you've got, yeah, you've, got, you've taken away 1, so it's minus, there's a minus, and you're going to have 1 over 8 x squared. Okay, that's what the first three terms are because this becomes a half and that becomes minus a half so you get minus one over eight that's minus a quarter divided by two which is minus one over eight so that's that part done now we've got to do one minus x to the power of minus a half so you've got one plus n which is minus a half times x which is minus x the x here is this negative sign as well plus and you're going to have a half minus a half then you've got to take away from that minus a half so it's minus three over two over 2 factorial times you're going to have minus x squared okay so that's um, as far as you want to go but we want to simplify this we want to simplify this. this is going to give us 1 plus a half x because minus times minus is a half and here you're going to have a positive two negatives multiplied give you a positive and this will also be positive because minus minus squared is going to be positive so you're going to have plus again you're going to have 3 over 8 x squared okay so we've got now 
up to here. So now what we can do is we can multiply them together. So we can say that 1 plus x to the power of a half times 1 minus x to the power of minus a half is equal to these two brackets multiplied. So you have 1 plus a half x minus an eighth x squared times you've got 1 plus a half x plus 3 over 8 x squared. Okay, now we're going to multiply, but we only want up to the x squared terms. I'm not going to bother with anything that's above that. We have to be careful not to miss anything out. So you have 1 times 1, which is 1. Then you have 1 times a half x. That's okay. That's a half x. Then you have 1 times 3 over 8 x squared. That's fine. That's an x squared term. Then you have a half times 1, which is fine. That's a half x. Then you have a half x times a half x, which is plus a quarter x squared. Now, if I multiply the half x by this, I'm going to get an x cubed term. I'm going to ignore, I'm going to ignore that term because I only want up to x squared. And for the last one, you've got minus, eight, minus 1 over 8 x squared times 1. That's the same as what it is. And the next term is going to be x cubed. The next term is going to be x to the power 4. So I'm not going to go any further and I'm going to simplify this. And hopefully this will come out the same as what we're supposed to get. So you've got 1 plus, you've got a half plus a half x, which is 1x. Then you've got um, the x, x squared terms. Well, you've got 3 over 8x squared minus 1 over 8x squared, which is um, 2 over 8x squared. 2 over 8 is 1 over 4. 1 over 4 plus 1 over 4 is a half. So that gives you a half x squared and I think that's what we had to show yes 1 plus I'll just bring it down here so we can be certain okay we had to show this okay so we've got the right expression as you can see okay now uh, when it says here uh, the modulus of x is less than 1 Okay, basically, um, when you have an expansion like this, you have to make sure that whatever's in this section here, okay, for the, for the first expansion, let's say for this to be correct, we can say the modulus of x has to be less than 1, and here the modulus of minus x must be less than 1. So therefore, in both cases, the modulus of x must be less than 1, okay, because it becomes positive. All right, so what's common in both of them is that, that thing. I don't think you'd have to actually show this here, but just just to be on the safe side because whatever goes inside this bracket its modulus must be less than one for this to be a valid expansion okay because these are called infinite expansions anyway that's part a done okay now we're going to do part b now i'm going to take this result that we have because we need it in part b oh it's actually it's actually there okay now it says substitute x equals 1 over 26 into this expansion um, to obtain an approximation to the square root of 3. So first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put x equals 1 over 26 inside this big expression to see what it gives us. So you have 1 plus 1 over 26 over 1 minus 1 over 26. So that gives us a square root of this is like 26 over 26 plus 1 over 26, which is 27 over 26 divided by and this is 20 25 over 26 okay let me just make that a bit neater i wrote it i wrote it down as a division instead of these fractions because i know that i can deal with this uh, by just flipping the sign so this is 20 changes into multiplication and making this as 26 over 25 now we can see they cancel out and that leaves me the square root of 27 over the, over the square root of 25. So we're left with the square root of 27 over the over 25. Now the square root of 27 is going to be, um, you can see it's 3 root 3, because this is 3 times 9. I'll just write this. This is 3 times 9 over 5. The square root of 25 is 5. That gives you 3 times root 3 over 5. Okay, so I know that when I put x equals 1 over 26 into here, Okay, so x equals 1 over 26, you end up with the square root of uh, 3 root 3 over 5. Okay, now, if this is equal to that, if they're equal to each other, okay, if these are equal to each other, let's put this down here. Okay, when x equals 26, 
if I put x equals 20, 1 over 26 in here, I should get approximately the same thing as when I put x over 1 over 26, 1 over 26 over here. Okay, so sorry, this is not this is not the square root of. I've, I've already, I've already done the square root. Sorry about that. What am I doing? Okay, so now what I can do here is I know when I put um, x equals 1 over 26 into here, I get 3 root 3 over 5. I'm going to also put 1 over 26 into here. So I'm going to have 1 plus 1 over 26 plus 2 times 1 over, plus a half times, sorry, plus a half times 1 over 26 squared. And that should uh, now help me find an approximation for root 3 because I can just multiply both sides by I can get rid of the, the fraction. I multiply both sides by 5 over 3, and I'm left with root 3 equals, and that will be an approximation for it. Okay, because I can just make root 3 the subject, and then what, what I get on this side will be approximately the same as root 3. So let's just add these together. So you have 1 plus 1 over 26. Plus a half. Times... 1 over 26 and that's going to be squared and that gives you 1405 over I'm going to do this because I always always do this okay so what I'm going to do here this is 3 root 3 over 5 is approximately equal to 1,405 over 1,352. So now I can just say, let me multiply both sides by 5. So root 3 is approximately equal to 5 times 1,405 over 3 times 1,352. So let me take this answer and multiply it by 5 over 3. Okay, no, they don't, they don't want to give me an exact answer. So I'll do. I'll just write it five times, one thousand four hundred and five, which gives me seven thousand and twenty-five. So we can say root three equals or is approximately to seven seven thousand and twenty-five over, and you got three times one three times one three five two. Four thousand and fifty-six. Okay, so it says give your answer in the form of A over B, where A and B are integers. So that's done. Okay, so we've answered that question. I don't think it can be simplified. If I do 7,025 over 4056, oh, it does, it simplifies. Okay, it does simplify. Okay, so no. What did I do? See the double the two, two there, the zero there. No, it doesn't simplify. Okay, that's as simple as, as it gets. Okay, it doesn't simplify at all. So that's the answer there. Um, and they want to leave it as a fraction. Okay, so we leave it as a fraction. However, if you want to check to see how close your answer is, write it as a decimal, 1.732. I'll just write it here, 1.732 on the side. It's not part of my answer. I'm just checking. And if I do the square root of three, and I see what I get, I get. 1.732 is almost um, up to like the first four decimal places. It seems it's almost the same. So we can. The reason I'm doing that in the end is just to check to to be rest assured that I've done everything correctly. If it came out of something totally different, then you know then of course it can't be correct. This should give you an approximately the same value as root three. So that's why it's always good to check in the end. Okay. So that's how we deal with such a question. All right. So that was 7,025. Okay, now, so basically, a question like this, you'll notice that you'll end up with something with a root 3 in it, like we did. In the beginning, I didn't know that's going to happen, right? You didn't know. By the time you got to this stage, you kind of guessed that, oh, you got like, the 26 is going to ca ca cancel out. You're going to end up with 5 as a, 25 is like, square root of 25 is a, a whole number. And also, I know that the square root of 27 is going to have a root 3 in it, because it's 9 times 3. You see, so you uh, then at that stage think, okay, you know that it's going to probably work out to be something like this. So you end up with, when you put 1 over 26 into this expression, you end up with 3 root 3, okay, over 5. 
And so you've got root 3 in your expression, and then all you have to do after this is just equate that to 1 over 26 put into the expansion that we already found, and rearrange to make root 3 the subject, and that will give you approximation. So there's the answer for question number 2, B and A from the June 2013 GCE C4 paper from Edexcel. Um, this now corresponds to the new P4 in the International A-Level Edexcel. And other questions from this paper, once I answer any other questions, I will collect them together and put them in a playlist which should appear in this area. Other questions from bi about binomial expansion from P4, you'll find in this list uh, playlist that should appear on this area over here. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link and the top of the page will have a link taking you to one of the new P4 papers. Thank you for watching and see you soon.